Welcome along guys. Well here it is. This is the 790 Adventure. Not the R version. The R version is the slightly more off-road focus with some longer travel suspension. This is the smaller, still with a bit of off-road pretense because it's got a 21 inch front wheel, front wheel. But this is a lower seat height bike for people who want that adventure experience but are perhaps a little vertically challenged perhaps. So stay tuned, strap yourselves in, let's take this bad girl out for a first ride. I've had this from KTM. I called this a first ride. It's not really a first ride. I've had this for two weeks. <laughs> I've ridden it quite a fair bit. So this is really my full review of this bike. And the first thing you notice when you get on this, it's got this delicious TFT on it, which has, you know, fuel, you can connect your phone. There's lots of extras on this bike, which is a bit like the Super Duke. They're not all included as standard. So we go through some of those in a minute. So interestingly enough, I've just come back from Spain, whereby I've been riding the GS1250s around. For the last two days, I've been riding them on road, I've been riding them off road. I do intend to take this off road as part of this review, only very light, you know, gravel lanes, not, nothing too extreme because this is really a more road focused bike. Even though it's got that 21 inch front wheel, I don't think it's making any pretenses to be an off-road machine. I'm going to buy the R model in a couple of months time and we will take that for a, a, take it for its paces off-road a little bit more but I'm going to take this off-road because it's an adventure bike. First impressions after getting off the GS is this is obviously much lighter. This feels like a much much smaller bike than the GS. Let's lose the jazz. It's also got an incredible amount of go. It's proper quick. For a little 800, this, this motor has got some proper legs on it. The mid-range is really strong. Whoa, sort of from, from three grand to sort of six grand. It does really just take off. So this engine first appeared last year. Was it last year or was it the year before? In the 790 Duke. It's an 800cc parallel twin, a brand new design. It was KTM's first ever parallel twin. And it's an absolute stonking power plant. It's compact, it's powerful, it's a little bit noisy. This bike only has a fairly low mileage. It's just under the first service, this bike. And it is a little bit noisy, the engine. There used to also be a few problems when I borrowed the 790 Duke, it used to cut out sometimes when it got hot and you'd, be, you'd, you'd go into like that, you'd pull the clutch to slow down, change gear and it would cut out. This bike has, hasn't done none of those things. So all of those slightly hot running issues, um, slight little niggles, they seem to have been completely ironed out. A quick shifter and a blipper, which I'm also very pleased to say works very well on this. I've actually got my off-road boots on today because I was planning to, to take this off-road a little bit but the blipper and the quick shifter are lovely, no problems, no false neutrals, a lovely gearbox. It's also got all the other electronic goodies from the 790. The cornering ABS, the cornering traction control. But one thing they've been a little bit naughty with on this bike, they've actually started charging for some of the extras on this. This also has the option to connect your phone to the bike via Bluetooth and that is an extra, it's an extra couple of hundred pounds to enable that. But that is a great option because if you've got a, a headset you can actually have the music and control the music on your phone from the controls on the bike. So I'll, I'll show you around that in a minute. So riding position, how does this compare to the big old GS? Well it doesn't feel quite as sporty. I'm quite surprised to say the GS has a slightly more sporty feel to the ride. This is fine, but you're sat, because the seat height is so low on this, your legs are up a little bit, you know, you're sort of set back a little bit of an armchair position, which the GS doesn't have. The GS has a little bit more of a sporty feel. But apart from that, it is very comfortable. The seat is very comfortable. The bars are high, there's plenty of leverage, it's got a 21 inch front wheel. 
so it does feel a little bit a tiny little bit unstable at the front but it's, it's fine once you get used to it so we're getting a bit adventure now <laughs> this sort of stuff no problem at all the suspension is sort of road focused it's, it's the new WP squirrel suspension it's very compliant it's very nice on the road we'll take it off road in a minute we can see if it can actually handle any bumps and stuff but it's nice enough it's comfortable enough oh it's just that punch it's got mid-range punch is impressive absolutely impressive it feels like the 1250gs that punch it's got for such a small engine that is that's an impressive amount of go they've also sorted out the fueling the 790 duke was very snatchy last year it was one of my criticisms i put against it in my review it was just you know very on off very snatchy that has also seems to be addressed now so they've, they've, they've spent a bit of time ironing out those little little flaws that the early 790 duke had and now this motor is much more refined and much more pleasant to live with afternoon afternoon oh miserable you can't help but notice these huge <laughs> pendulant well i've heard them referred to as testicles either side of the bike and that is actually the fuel tank this bike has a 20 litre tank so proper adventure sized tank and you wouldn't know it from up here that's because the tank is up here and it's also down the side so you've got 20 litres of fuel capacity on this machine which KTM say will do you 250 miles so that is a, a massive range because this bike is actually pretty fugal it doesn't drink that much fuel so with 20 litres on board you've got real distance covering abilities but they do look a bit like ball bags that's the downside but the other upside to the ball bags is it keeps the weight of the fuel very low in the bike. So again, even when you're full of fuel, the bike still feels really rather sporty and rather agile. Chucking it into the bends, yeah, it feels pretty good. Not the sportiest thing in the world. I think that's due to the 21 inch front wheel. It does make, you know, it, it, it does make the bike a bit more unsettled but you can still have fun you can hustle this just be a little bit more committed with it you may have to you know the bike doesn't give you masses of confidence to throw it in you just have to trust that it can do it i don't think there's any doubt this bike's going to be a big hit because it's opening up that whole adventure market to people who are very slow <laughs> out of the way sir because the adventure market is huge and you know normally these adventure bikes are very very tall they're very very heavy even someone of my size the thought of maneuvering a big heavy adventure bike especially off road or on a loose surface it it, it, it makes you very apprehensive this because it's lower because that center of gravity is lower because of the, the the ball bags it's actually a much easier prospect and if you could if you can flat foot the bike which i think most people would be able to flat foot this no problem then that gives you a whole lot more confidence Grunt. i think what we'd do is stop and do a little walk around before the bike gets absolutely minging off-road. Let's do a little walk around right here. So there it is, excuse the wind, it's quite windy, the weather isn't particularly good. But there's the bike, you know, there, there's the big fuel tanks I'm talking about. I mean, it is, it's a little bit of an odd looking bike. From certain angles, I think it looks very nice. From the back angle like that, it looks good. From the front, I think, it takes a little bit more getting used to i think the enduro r version actually looks a lot better than this obviously you've got the full led headlights you know that that ktm look that they all have 
I like the big mud guard area here. I think that looks very nice. A big bit of surface area. You can also have optional top box to go on here. That's all standard, so you can, they do a nice metal top box to go on. There doesn't seem to be any options for any side panniers as of yet, but you can have a big top box on there. The seat is comfortable. The seat is really comfortable. It's nice the way it wraps up around here. Um, and it's also got a really nice pillion seat as well. The R model, this is all one piece seat, obviously because it's more off-road focused for moving up and down the bike. This is a, you know, a road focused bike. Dashboard, ready to race. You know, you've got different trip options on here. Trip one, trip two. The ABS, you can switch it to off-road mode as well or turn the ABS off, which is quite a nice option. This one also has the quick shifter and the blipper enabled. You can go in and you can turn that on and off. Um, you can also set things like your favorites. So what, what, what things you want to appear on the main screen, you know, other options, you know, of, of, oh, there's a lot of information on here. General info, the bike, you know, all, all stuff you want to come up when you, uh, when you connect your Bluetooth mode. The shift light, which you can adjust the shift light on, you can't do that because it's it's being run in at the moment. The daylight running lights, you can turn those on and off or have them automatic, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's a lot. What I mentioned about the uh, the KTM My Ride, which is the phone integration, I've been really impressed with this. You can have an audio or navigation mode. And if you go to audio like that, these buttons these buttons then control, you know, that's your, that's your track up and down, these two, that's your play button, you know, and if holding these down is your volume control as well. So all these then double up like this on your screen, you know, it'll tell you what track you're playing, what the artist is, and this is through Spotify or something like that. So for me, who's a bit, who loves a bit of music when I'm riding and a bit of tech like that, that is really appealing. And that's, that's a, but that again, it's a couple of hundred quid extra. To enable that but it's the same with the navigation you can do that with navigation so you run your your phone app your your uh, navigation app on your phone and it will tell you you know next left there'd be you know just your normal sort of navigation type instructions on the screen which again is nice it's very nice so even my phone battery is displayed on here so you know little things like that and nice nice touches it's a it's a very very interesting bike and I think it will do very well for KTM because, I mean, look at that seat height. The seat is very low on this. Anyone could ride this, no problem, and have that whole adventure experience, but in a more manageable fashion with an engine which is still delivers an amazing amount of grunt. So I, there is not, I can't really see any negatives apart from some small gripes around the brakes and, and stuff like that, you know? It's just, I think the looks are a little bit Marmite. If you can get used to the looks, I think you will really, really enjoy this bike. Let's jump back on. Servicing, it'll do 10,000 miles between services. So an incredibly high service schedule. So that is brilliant. And to actually ensure this bike, it isn't too bad either. I had a quote from my friend at B Moto and Frank, who's a 37 year old teacher from Norwich, he's got one speeding conviction and five years no claims discount. One of these for him to ensure fully comprehensive would be £196. So pretty reasonable to actually insure as well. And fuel consumption, they're sort of saying around 40 miles per gallon out of this. Um, so it's, you know, to actually run one of these, isn't going to cost you a fortune. One thing I have found though is a couple of another slight quirk. I don't know if it's because of the two big separate fuel tanks. I guess these tanks must be linked in some fashion or you're going to get one full up and nothing in the other and you're going to not run out of fuel. So there must be some sort of tubing into connecting them to let the fuel flow between them. But what I found is Sometimes if the bike's been left in the side stand, it will say you need fuel. So at the moment it's said I've got low fuel. I haven't got low fuel, but it takes a little while for, for things to move across and to, and to correct that. So that's something I've noticed quite often that, you know, one minute it will say you've got a lot of fuel, the next minute it will say you haven't. You can see it's gone off now and the fuel's gone up. So it takes a little while to the fuel to flow between these testicles, I think is the, uh, 
is the issue. So if the bike suddenly says, hang on, you're running out of petrol, just give it a little while, it may change its mind. <laughs> it's quick. Okay, there's the green lane up ahead. We've had a lot of rain. It's going to be a bit wet. This doesn't have off-road tyres on. This just has heavily treaded road tyres. Well, I'm going to try it though. It's an adventure bike. You know, you should be able to do a little bit of adventuring on it. Actually, what I will do though, to give it more of a chance, I will put it in off-road mode. Let's put it in off-road mode at least. Off-road mode, close the throttle. There we go. That'll just reduce the power slightly, thr flatten off the throttle response a little bit so it's not as sharp. Uh, I could also put the ABS into off-road mode as well, couldn't I? ABS, off-road mode. Okay, so now we're in full off-road mode. Always a good idea before going off-road to get the bike in the correct mode. But the problem with this is going to be the, the amount of grip, I think with these tyres. Let's stand up. This is no problem at all. I mean, this is the sort of off-roading you're going to want to do on this bike. You're probably not going to want to go too extreme on it. It feels nice between your legs stood up. The bars are nice and high. You've got a decent, you know, I can stand up more or less. I'm 6'2 and I can more or less stand up properly on this, no problem. Yeah, the throttle's nicely softened off, and so it's not snatchy. Just what you need when you're on the loose stuff. But it doesn't, it feels light. I was off-road on GS's last week, and let's do the puddle. Hey, this feels light, this feels nice. Yeah. This sort of stuff, no problem at all. Oh, a bit more gravelly now. Yeah, that throttle is nicely flattened off. It's not too sharp. It's not just spinning up. It's everything you need it to do, really. Suspension is compliant. It's soaking up these sorts of bumps, no problem. No bother at all for it. Absolutely perfect. It's a great bike. There's no denying it's a good bike, this. I think KTM are onto a winner with this sort of middleweight adventure bike. It's opening up the market to a lot more people. And you know, time will tell how this market goes. You know, Yamaha have the, the Tenere coming out very soon or later on in the year. That is a lot cheaper than this. The, the, one of the problems I do have with this bike is it is quite expensive. It's £11,000, starts at £11,000. By the time you chopped a few extras on it, like the, the, the quick shift and blipper, and perhaps the, the phone integration, and that price rises. And the standard 790 is such good value, a sort of eight and a half, that it makes you wonder why this is £3,000 more expensive for the base version, when it's based quite heavily on that bike, which is built to a budget. Another great thing about this bike is its ability just to cruise on the motorway. You can travel some serious distances with this because it absolutely cruises. Let me get it up to speed. 70 miles an hour, 4,500 revs, top gear. Effortless. You could cruise at this all day long. Down through the gearbox on the blipper. The beauty of this bike is it's going to appeal to a real wide audience because you've got that adventure bike look and an and ability I mean it has got the ability but with a nice low seat height that anyone can ride without feeling feeling intimidated and that's the thing with it you know that's, that's I think why this bike has a 21 inch front wheel because it is still to go off-road on it is still to explore and go adventuring on if you're going to be really serious about your off-road on one of these then you go for the R model but that does have the longer travel suspension so it's going to be better off-road than this but then you're going to not have that low seat height anymore so I think with this model they're saying yes we won't call it NS because that makes that it's just a street model it's not just a street model you can go off-road on this it's got a 21 inch front wheel 
but it can be appeal to everybody. People who don't want to lug a 250 kilo adventure bike around. This is where this bike is going to be, going to perhaps corner the market and I think launch a, a host of competitors. I know Yamaha have the Tenere coming, Suzuki have the V-Strom 650, but that's, that, that, that isn't a real, real adventure bike. There's too many compromises with that one, I would say. But I think this could be the future, and I think this bike will sell very, very well, because it's an absolute beauty. See you later, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. Bonkers. It's also pretty quick.